Hey guys, so I want to walk you through setting up React Router 4 on a fresh install of uh, Create React app. I'm literally just going to walk through this quick start. Highly recommend checking out the uh, documentation. Uh, they have great guides. Uh, this is the Re React Router um, documentation right here. They explain stuff super well. What I'm going to do is just kind of walk through some of the differences I've seen in version 4 and how I like to do things now with version 4. Set up a little demo app over here. Um, I just did uh, did create React app and start a new application. It's brand new. If you can see, I have this little page. I have the server started. And how I just start adding React Router to this, get pages set up. Um, stuff is a little bit different now So than what I've been used to uh, with version 4, but I do like it uh, once I've gotten used to it. So without further ado, let's get started with this thing. And right off the bat, it says the big thing that changed is you now install React Router DOM instead of just React Router. So this is my project here, RR4, and I'm gonna go ahead and do yarn React and add this package. Now you used to just do yarn add React Router. Now they specify DOM, and the reason for that is um, they want it to be you can do React Router DOM, and you can get React Router. React Native. Uh, and I don't know if that's the name of the package, but they have a React Native version now. Uh, I don't know if they had it before, but now they want to, you know, have them separate into two different packages. So, okay, I got this here. I'm going to go ahead and delete some things I don't want. So I don't need app.css. I don't need app.test. I don't need index.css. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and remove those. I uh, don't need this logo.svg either. Um, that's fine and cool. So our index page is good. Come back to the app. Um, what I like to do when doing React Router is I like creating a routes folder and then I'll have an index.js and an index.js I'll actually have all my routes in this page. So go ahead and import React from React and then import, we're going to need a couple things, um, basically these three things right here. We don't need link, but these two. So from React Router DOM. Uh, you'll notice they renamed router to browser router. Um, they were using an alias there, that's why they're renaming it, because it used to be called router. Um, we're going to export default and we can put our routes here. So what I like to do is just create a browser router here. And, and then we can put routes in the middle. So for example, one route we'll have is the home page. And then same as before, you can pass a component in. And so I'm gonna import home from home. And then I'll render, or pass in the home component. So then now when I go to this path, I will render the home component. But of course, uh, we need to make this home component and then actually uh, import this. What is going on? Uh, file name extension. Oh, this is my ESLint. Okay, so we need to actually import this routes into our app so it gets rendered. So I'm gonna import, first I'm gonna get rid of this because we're gonna make this a peer function. And also I wanna import so space here, import uh, routes from routes dot slash. And then I don't need any of this here. I'll just go ahead and export default a function and then our routes. And maybe actually, let's just get rid of, since we only have our routes here, you know, this is a good practice though. Um, if you wanna wrap later, if you wanna wrap stuff with Redux provider and other things, you would put that here. So we'll keep this for now. But all right, let's come over here, code to our phone page, right? We didn't create that component yet. Um, so I, usually what I'll do is I'll put my routes here. So home.js. So this is just the most basic example, right? We have a single route and export default. We're rendering it just on the home page. Uh, div home. Bam. 
So refresh, we might have to restart the server and we don't, okay. So cool. So we're here. Um, that's the most basic example. We can change the path here. You guys should know this. And then that path is represented here. So if I, now we don't see it anymore. And is there a way to, I'll just move my bar out a little bit. Okay, so slash home, we now render that home component there. So that that's just the super basics. One thing you might notice now is you might be used to, if you wanted to add another route, just doing it like this, right? This looks like it would work. Um, of course, we should do render home over here. Um, all right, that looks like it's gonna work. But hey, we get this error. A router may only have one child element. So this is something you might get an error for, and the reason for that is browser router, like it says, can only have one child. We're giving it two children, two routes. Now, the way to handle this, uh, one way is to do a, just a div, right? And do that. Um, and then that will take care of that error for you. But what I'll show you is there's another way to do it. Um, and you'll notice, hey, that did not do what we really want, right? Uh, what page are we on? Uh, I'll slash home. There we go. That's what I want. Now we can squish over. Sorry, guys. Now we're in a good position to show. I just want to show the URL here. So, all right, we're here. One home is rendered, but now if I go to home, you notice two is rendered. Why is that happening? This might be another thing that could happen to you. And the reason for that is uh, they now have a new word you can use called exact. So, if you use exact, exact, I mean, exactly what it sounds like. It matches this exact path. What's happening is this matches here. So we could show you this a third time. It's home two, right? So if I go to slash home slash two, there's gonna be actually three components, right? Because it matches on this, it matches on this, and it matches on this. So we should see three homes. And, but we can fix this by using the exact keyword. Um, so passing exact, we should now get only one per and there you go, you're good. Now, this div is not the best way to actually do this, right? And just putting a div here, they actually have a special component you can use um, called uh, switch. So let's see where it is. Here it is. So switch, and check it out. It just wraps your routes, and the reason for switch is it matches exactly uh, one of your routes too. So that's helpful. So we're gonna go ahead and pass a switch here. Um, and we'll put our switch here instead of using it. And you can see this is, how's this different just using browser routes? It's unique that renders a route exclusively in contrast. Every route that matches location renders exclusively. Consider this code. No URL is in slash, then and it will render all because they all match the path. So this is this is what I was just showing you, right? We were able to get rid of that with exact. Um, another way is with switch, and switch matches the first thing, the, the first thing you want it to match. So you don't have to use switch if you don't want to. If there's some scenarios where you want multiple to match, you can do that. For the most part, use switch, usually you want one component. Now, there's now a new way to do this. I mean, at least I think it's new. I didn't see it in version three. Um, should be in the quick start. It is using render. Okay, they're not using render here, so I'll just show you guys what it looks like. So instead of doing component, what you can do is render. And so that can be a function. And it just renders the home like this. So same thing is going to happen with as the component in this case. Notice how home shows up just fine. Um, so you might ask, why would I ever want to use render? Well, render, you can actually pass in some props here. And then you can do a spread here. And now your home component actually has some extra props. And one of the extra props, which is very useful and 
well actually there's multiple very useful ones um, they will have we'll just go to the bottom here uh, match they'll have location and history is what they pass in so history will have um, basically how you've navigated the page and allow you to push so you can programmatically switch to different pages so I'm gonna come over here to my home and let's go ahead and make this a regular class actually we don't have to make it a class uh, we'll do props and we'll just go ahead and print what the props are so you guys can see what's going on so return and we can console dot log props come over here to our console we can see our objects so history location match like I told you guys history the main thing I use with this is push pushes you to a different location match has some parameters on how you match this URL and uh, params if I, I believe that's for queries like if I do uh, hello is equal to two I believe that's in the match nope it's not in that it's in location then yeah here's location see how it has search and it has these things okay so mostly I'm using history so I'll just show you guys a possible use case with history um, so we can say we can make this a class, for example. So actually, let's get rid of this. Class home extends react.component. And then on component will mount. Maybe I'll do an if can. There might be some condition where you want to do something. And then I'll do this.history.push. And then I'm going to specify slash home slash. I just got pushed equal true and then we're going to just do our render function here so return and we'll just return a div with I so you may be uh, used to in the past um, expect a string you might be oh we need to export this um, you might be in the past used to um, getting the history, like importing it up here. Now you get history from the props and you have to access it there. So now what I'm about to demonstrate to you guys is when I reload this page, so I just save this. When this page reloads, um, we're going to go to this home page, component will mount, and then we're actually going to push to this other page here. Um, why well, probably are going to push? Let's console.log. I, um, for whatever reason we didn't push, maybe history is broken, there we go. So we went to slash home, I don't know why uh, console, well, like hi didn't show up in the console here, let's run this one more time, there we go, hi shows up and then we're redirected. So push. Make, helps you change pages. Link is the same way. You guys should know how Link works if you use your React router before. It lets you switch pages. Um, the only other thing I found really interesting is that I use is the redirect tag, which I believe they used to have. I don't know for sure, but with authentication. They have an authentication one. Here we go, redirects, off. So I really like their authentication example right here. Um, I use this in my applications. So basically what it does is um, you do some kind of test to see if they're authenticated. If they are, you just go ahead and pass the component. If not, you pass a redirect component, and the redirect component just takes you to another page. Pretty plain, simple, cut and dry. Um, so that's about it for React Router, guys. There's one last thing I want to make another video about, um, and that is using this with Redux Saga. Because uh, a big use case, uh, in my opinion, is doing uh, pushing with history, after, like, for example, someone logs in. So being able to switch a page when someone logs in. Um, and then another one is with when you have routes like this, we can pass in like parameters. So I'm gonna make two more videos, one about this, passing these guys, and another about uh, using this with Redux Saga, because I think that's a big one. 
So thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned. More React Router 4 stuff is coming out soon.